the one thing I've actually started getting into the last couple of months now is uh, sprouts. Because if you think about it, a sprout has the nutritional power to grow an entire plant. So there's so much just value in eating those. And it, like, I think it's a tablespoon or two tablespoons of sprouts is the nutritional equivalent of like heads and heads of broccoli. Hello and welcome to the Disrupt the Everyday podcast. We're here to help you navigate life while disrupting the status quo. Our discussions cover a number of topics relevant to everyday life. We discuss everything from relationships to entrepreneurship. We also engage in some difficult but important conversations. And now, here are your hosts, Brian and Tanya Hamilton. Welcome to episode 23 of the Disrupt the Everyday podcast. Today we're joined by Veronica White and we'll be discussing nutrition. Some of the points we'll be covering is dietary measures for recovering from a stroke. We'll also discuss the rainbow diet and detoxing. Veronica, thanks for joining us today. And we'll actually jump right in by asking, who is Veronica White? Um, For sure. So I worked at Min for about a decade, actually. So I have a lot of background in that dealing with people and everything. But then I realized that wasn't what drives me at all. And I really, really wanted to do something that I loved for a living. So I came up with this theory that I wanted to get paid to play with my food. And I thought that would be the best existence possible. Went back to school for holistic nutrition and then fell in love because this is just the healing power of food blows my mind. And so I started tuning into like, well, what can we do with that? So like whole foods, I have a big focus on whole foods and using the entire Thing that nature gave us to get the most amount of nutrients. So I help people optimize their health by using things like a whole food diet, proper meditative focused breathing, stuff like that. You also experienced some health challenges. Can you talk to us about those and how that's impacted what you do today? Yeah, sure. Um, my road to recovery is actually kind of interesting because it's absolutely what drove me to the career that I picked. So when I was 11 years old, I was diagnosed with something called an arteriovenous malformation. So an AVM, it's basically malformed blood vessels. So your blood vessels usually go arteries to capillaries to veins. And the capillaries are smaller blood vessels. They slow down the flow of blood and distribute to the parts of your body. I had one connection where it just went arteries to veins. So there's nothing to slow down the blood, nothing to distribute it. So it goes hammering into the veins at a really high pressure. They can't take it, they go pop. This causes things like death, stroke paralysis, So like I said, I had one buried in the middle of my brain. It was about the size of a small clementine, so three inches in diameter. And it changed absolutely everything about my life. I was 11 when I was diagnosed prior to an event, which was extremely rare. And since that, like between the time I was 11 years old and I was diagnosed and I was 18 and had it surgically removed, I went through two brain hemorrhages, two strokes, and all three known treatments for the condition. But I'm still here. So after all that, I was still in healing mode when I hit university. So I started looking into, well, what are some natural ways that I can kind of improve my, my functioning, my memory, because I had huge short-term memory issues at that point from, because of the brain hemorrhages, I, I wanted to improve, like I said, my physical functioning. So muscle strength, muscle coordination, my balance, all these things very affected by the stroke or the strokes, I guess. And I knew there was a way that I'd be able to help it using something natural. And that drove me to nutrition. So I, um, a couple of years ago, went back to school for holistic nutrition. And now I am working on putting together a program for stroke and brain injury survivors to help them kind of maximize their recoveries. Veronica, would you be able to provide us with some dietary recommendations for people who are recovering from strokes and even just for brain health in general? my recommendations actually apply to just about everybody because anybody would benefit from them. So there is, um, so the Mediterranean diet, everyone's heard of the Mediterranean Mm -hmm. diet, right? So the Mediterranean diet is rich in vegetables and fruits, nuts, legumes, whole grains. They have fish and seafood as the primary sources of animal protein and really good quality extra virgin olive oil is the main source of fat. Wine is allowed in moderation. Poultry and dairy is also done in moderation and red meat and sweets are rarely eaten. And then there is the DASH diet, which is similar to the Mediterranean diet in that it has, uh, you're getting plenty of vegetables, fruits, and whole grains, along with beans, nuts, and lean animal proteins, but it also limits fats and added sugars. So what I recommend to people is called the MIND diet. 
MIND stands for Mediterranean DASH Diet Intervention for Neurodegenerative Delay. Big words <laughs> just means it's basically an intervention to stop the breakdown of your neurons in your brain. Scientists develop it by this by combining features from the Mediterranean diet and the DASH diet and incorporating specific dietary strategies so, that have been shown to support good brain health. So I like to recommend it because I find it doesn't usually require someone to dramatically alter their ways of eating. And there's quite a few options for which foods you can choose from. Plenty of whole foods, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans and nuts, olive oil, fish, poultry. The difference about this type of diet is it recommends eating certain foods at certain frequencies. So for example, it calls for at least six servings a week of leafy green vegetables, and at least two servings a week of berries, especially strawberries and blueberries. So you can consume the servings at any time you choose, but it's like I said, it's a green leafy vegetables, at least six servings a week. So that means you're having a salad every day. Other vegetables, at least one serving per day, nuts, at least five servings per week, wine, one glass per day, recommended for good health. So it's just like, you can make a real difference in someone's recovery with this because by eating this way, you're providing your body with the nutrients it needs to do the whole recovery process. So it's interesting. I find when I'm eating properly and I'm feeling my body with good stuff, I have energy to go all day. But as soon as I add something with sugar in it, I crash really fast. My solution to that is I have devised recipes for all the, the snack cravings. They solve your snack craving, but they're a healthy fix. So say you crave potato chips and most people do, like it says, salty, crunchy, oily kind of, it's, it's everything about a potato chip that people love. So what I tell people is if you have a box grater, like a cheese grater, one side typically has just the lines. Mm -hmm. It has like three or four lines. Mm -hmm. If you take a potato and you just grate that on that side of the box, you end up with scalloped potato style potatoes. So then you can toss those with some olive oil, black pepper and roast them in the oven. You end up with healthy potato chips and they've got healthy omega-3s from the olive oil. They've got fiber from the potatoes and it's a sweet potato. So it's got a ton of nutritional value that regular potatoes just don't have. And that solves your chip craving. And if you crave sweet stuff, then you could do like uh, chia pudding and put, um, I put cacao nibs in it, which tastes just like a chocolate chip, but has a way lower glycemic index with so less hit of your blood sugar. And it, it solves that sweet craving. It's, there's a solution for everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I like that. It, it's so true. There is. It, and it's all about, I guess, planning ahead, right? They, people always say when it comes to the whole eating, planning ahead, right? Because when you get hungry, what do you do? You reach for the quickest thing. Yeah. <laughs> so if you have those sweet potatoes already shredded and ready to go or your yogurt and stuff like that, then you can just grab that from the fridge. My right? best advice for that, if you're drawn to grab the sweet things, just don't keep them in your house. Mm -hmm. I know it sucks to live in a house that has no junk food, <laughs> but if that's what it takes, like I, you don't have to do it forever. Yeah. I had to do that to break my junk because I had a junk food like addiction, just given growing up with a very large family and all like we got takeout, we, we had chocolate bars in the, in the kitchen. And it's just like, I didn't want to do that as an adult anymore. So I just eliminated it entirely from my environment. And my boyfriend complained for a couple of weeks, but I, I've reintroduced some stuff. And a lot of it, what you can do is just make it yourself. So if you want to get rid of that bag of chips with like cookies, bake cookies yourself. You can use less sugar or no sugar. Mm -hmm. You can put way more fiber in it and less chemicals. So true. Okay. Yeah. So, so I guess one of the main focuses, one of the major focuses anyways, is just really focusing on those, fo focusing on staying away from the processed foods and really getting that more fresh or I, I guess maybe even like the flash frozen stuff to make sure that you're getting good quality food. Flash frozen stuff is actually a really good option because it's frozen at the peak of its ripeness. Like the, it's got the most nutritional value then. The one thing I've actually started getting into the last couple of months now is uh, sprouts. Because if you think about it, a sprout has the nutritional power to grow an entire plant. So there's so much just value in eating those. And I think it's a tablespoon or two tablespoons of sprouts is the nutritional equivalent of like heads and heads of broccoli. And they're really tasty too. They taste really good on top of my very snazzy salads. So is that like alfalfa sprouts? Alfalfa sprouts is one type of sprouts. Most people are familiar with those bean sprouts you get in Chinese food. Oh yes, yep. I, I love my favorites are broccoli sprouts. I've got sunflower sprouts. I've got um, alfalfa, red clover is super good. And so obviously that like, are you getting that uh, 
farm boy i'm some of that stuff probably not at a you know you can get a, um sprouting seeds at like uh, i know healthy planet sells them like okay. any health food store or any organic market some grocery stores some garden centers will sell them you can order them online too I really fully recommend sprouts. So as far as if you want nutritional stuff and energy, the energy you get from them, like, wow, I've never found something that's quite that, like really, I don't even think there's a word, enlivening is kind of what comes to mind. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Now, is there anything in terms of, yeah, like I know junk food's kind of obvious thing that we want to stay away from, but is there anything that I guess gets the reputation for being healthy, but really isn't necessarily good for you? Okay, so you know how like, there's branding for different products. Yes. And a lot of them, like those frozen dinners, for example, they are a great example because my family has bought these frozen dinners because they say healthy on the package. So I, I took the package from them. I turned it over. I showed them the ingredients list. And I was like, okay, look at this ingredient list. Show me one real food in that list. And they're like, they're reading and they're like, well, sodium is a real food, right? I'm like, yeah. But if you look at, I'm like, if you look at the nutrition table, this, this one meal gives you 200% of your recommended daily soda. You can't have any salt for two days. Like that's not, and these, a lot of these frozen meals are marketed as healthy or as like the big thing now is the keto friendly. And like, you really got to watch what's going into that. So if you're, if you are keto, great. I'm glad that's working for you, but like, watch your facts, make sure you're eating the right kind and the right amount at the right times, make sure that you're getting enough fiber on top of that. Cause that's the problem a lot of people on keto have is they're not getting the fiber they need because they're not eating all the vegetables they once were. My best advice for if you wanna know where the healthy foods in the, in the grocery store are, just stick to the edges, mm -hmm. for sure. stick to the perimeter of the store. That's the whole grains, fruits, vegetables, dairy, if you're into that, but all the alternative milks as well. It's got the meats, it's got the fish that's all around the border of the store. The middle aisles are usually processed stuff and stuff you really don't need. Like you can go there to get rice and pasta, but you don't need processed stuff in your life. You can do most stuff from scratch pretty reasonably. And it actually is not as hard. It doesn't take as long as so many people think it's, it's quite easy. One of the other areas we wanted to talk about today is the rainbow diet. What is the rainbow diet? Can you unpack that for us? The way the rainbow diet works, it basically is exactly what it sounds like. You eat the rainbow. Nature gave us foods of all different colors, all different, all different nutrient profiles. And it's kind of amazing the way that they all work together. Plants contain different pigments caused by the phytonutrients that are inside of them. So these different, they're plant nutrients and different colored plants are linked to higher levels of specific nutrients and health benefits, depending on what the color is. So eating more fruits and vegetables, always a good idea eating a variety of them and a variety of colors will give you way more nutritional benefit bang for your buck. So there's a ton of different benefits about phytonutrients. They, there's been a, a bunch of different randomized controlled trials, like scientific trials, which I find really fascinating because I'm into the science end of things. And they look at like with what the nutrients do and where they're from. So things like beta carotene, for example, beta carotene is found in a lot of orange colored foods. So carrots, you're here to eat carrots because they're good for your eyes. What we're not actually told is that's the beta carotene that's good for our eyes because it, it helps the, the retina. And it's, it's just amazing like that. So some of them are grouped together because they have the same benefits. If we start at the bottom, we start with red, right? That's got huge anti-inflammatory benefits. It's a great antioxidant. It may help lower your risk of heart disease and certain cancers it may help reduce sun related skin damage. Like it's just, it's really good. Red foods are also linked to the root chakra. So they're very grounding. So say you go through something like a really messy breakup, your stability has been ripped up from under you. Nothing is certain anymore. Eating red foods might be beneficial because a lot of people find them to be very grounding. They help you feel more centered and focused. Also good if you have a test coming up. Yellow and orange are two of the ones that, I, like I said, are grouped together because they're both really anti-inflammatory, also antioxidants. They support eye health. They may help lower damage, uh, lower your risk of heart disease and cancer as well. Green foods, my favorite because like leafy greens are just everything to me. Again, hugely anti-inflammatory. You'll notice that with all these foods, pretty much they're anti-inflammatory is like one of the taglines you'll notice that apply to most fruits and vegetables. Again, a huge antioxidant. Cruciferous vegetables in particular may be really helpful for lowering the risk of cancer and heart disease. Things like cabbage, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, that's really great. 
Blue and purple, they're linked together. You got an anti-inflammatory again, antioxidant. It may help improve your brain function. And so that's because your third eye chakra and your crown chakra are associated with blue and indigo and violet. So like those, those colors. So it's really amazing how that all ties together. Blue and purple foods, so they may help your brain function. They may also help lower your risk of heart disease, uh, neurological disorders, type two diabetes, and certain cancers. And I just want to point out, I'm not making health claims or saying they will absolutely help you, but studies have shown, and I can point you towards the studies if you like, there is a benefit to using these type of foods. Interesting thing, dark red foods have a slightly different nutrient profile. They may help support athletic performance through increased oxygen uptake. So they help your body use oxygen more effectively. They may also help lower the risk of high blood pressure, heart disease, and certain cancers. So that's a really beneficial thing to know. If you're prone to having something like high, blo high blood pressure, heart disease runs in your family, eating dark red foods may be more beneficial for you. And even white and brown foods have nutrients. So they're paired together again. Anti-inflammatory, they're antioxidant. They may help lower the risk of heart disease, colon cancer, and other cancers. So it's just kind of amazing to see how we can kind of group these nutrients together based on the color of the food and that there's that kind of commonality. For sure. So raw food or cooked? I know I hear a lot of times, obviously, when you cook your vegetables, you lose some of the nutrients. So what do you recommend for that? It's going to actually, what I'm going to answer this with is what I recommend to everybody I talk to. And that is your nutrition and your health is completely unique and individual to you. So it's going to be different for everyone. Some people would really benefit from a raw food diet. Like for example, smoothies, juices, that works really well for people. If you look at what's called your Ayurvedic constitution, that basically Ayurveda is like the study of life and how to balance it. So it groups people into these three constitutions, depending on their body type. So a Vata type is very like thin, very um, frail kind of uh, structure to their body. They benefit not from those juices and smoothies, but like warmer foods, you know, so like soups and stews, it's all about bringing balance. Raw is good for people who have, like it's called the, one of the other constitutions is kapha, because kapha is heavy, slow, cold. So they benefit from the lighter kind of juices and stuff. But for some people cook it. I like, I like cooked foods personally. And what about the sugar intake? So like, obviously it's the natural sugar and your fruits and like carrots and stuff like that. What do you suggest for that in the intake, I guess, the amount? Is there a limit? There is absolutely a limit and it's different for everyone, but your body will tell you what it, like how much is too much. The best thing, if you want to look up foods that are easier to balance your blood sugar with, uh, look up the glycemic index. Every food has a glycemic index and that basically tells you how fast it's going to spike your blood sugar. So things with a high glycemic index, like white sugar, really high glycemic index. It's going to spike your blood sugar pretty hard and you're going to have a crash afterwards. Whereas even a banana has got a pretty high glycemic index. Things that aren't as high on the glycemic index scale. So like greens are kind of in the middle to low end. Those are really great for balancing. But like I said, it's different for everyone. Some people really need that extra boost, boost of the sugar and some people just don't. Right now, in terms of actually preparing vegetables. I'm just thinking there's obviously a lot of different ways to, uh, to cook them. What are some of the benefits of the different cooking styles? Uh, flavors that my first one I go for, because <laughs> I'm all about that flavor and there's so much you can do with it. So if you take something and you braise it, for example, like you, if you take celery root and you braise it and cook it that way, then you're going to have a completely different flavor. If you take that same celery root and you roast it, this has a lot to do with the temperature brings out different uh, sugars in the food. So like a higher temperature will caramelize those sugars and make you have a more like a, like a golden syrupy taste. And it's, it's really good, but different cooking techniques are good for different purposes. Cooking in like a stir fry in a wok, the shape of the pan helps to concentrate the heat on the entire surface and it, the food cooks more evenly. So it can, you can cook it faster, which is great for Asian style restaurants where they have to turn out the food really super duper fast. Okay, so you talked to us about the rainbow diet. Now can we focus on the spring diet slash detox? Spring is a season of renewal, rebirth, and new life, basically. So some of the plants come out of their dormant winter rest and start to burst forth with colors, fruits, veggies, foliage, all that. That's kind of what detox is about. It's opening those channels and just getting it all out there. 
so detoxing, a lot of people think it's difficult or tedious. Um, some people think that it means fasting, which isn't necessarily correct. It's one way to detox, but a lot of people out there don't have the proper blood sugar control to be able to fa fast safely. So then they end up feeling dizzy or hungry, and it can be really difficult to participate in simple everyday activities because of this. So sometimes the best detox is simply to enjoy eating or a cleaner diet or fasting for just a few days to give your body a chance to reset. Also, in my mind, as a holistic nutritionist, detoxing isn't only about getting toxins out, but getting nutrients in is just as important. You can do any length of detox, like just listen to your body. But for a lot of people, I recommend you try a five-day kind of system at first, with the first three days being devoted to the removal of toxins and getting all that garbage out. And then the last two days, getting those the last of those deep-seated toxins out, and you add nourishing herbs and foods to get your diet to really nourish your body and kind of set you back to the best state of functioning. The secret to making it actually work well is to make detoxing something you do regularly and that you do often. If you build it into your weekly routine, you'd be amazed at how much better you feel. To really effectively also do a detox, it's a good idea to do it in a way that is least invasive to your lifestyle. So try to complete it in the five day period between Monday and Friday. You don't wanna be trying to do that on the weekend because that's just, why make it harder on yourself, right? Important things to remember before starting, be prepared. It's a good idea to have a few healthy snacks prepared ahead of time so you can be ready for the hiccups in your plans and changes in your schedule. So think of the things like veggie sticks with hummus, um, homemade pita crisps with chili powder. It's a really healthy option. You can make them yourself for like mere pennies. You can do freshly baked zucchini free, uh, sugar-free zucchini bread. Eliminating junk food inside your home is very helpful because if it's not there, you don't have the chips or the chocolate bars or the cookies as a snack option. It makes it a lot harder to eat them. So before you undertake a detox, do a kitchen detox, like take those junk foods, get them out. You can always buy them again afterwards if you really need to. But I don't, I find with a lot of people, once they get that detox done and they feel really like they're eating cleaner and they're feeling better, they don't even want the junk food anymore. Drinking lots of water is super duper important. We're supposed to drink six to eight glasses a day anyways. Um, avoiding plastic bottles is a good idea. There's a lot of water available at stores and glass bottles these days. You can get a, a Brita pitcher. I have a Brita pitcher. Adding a squeeze of citrus also helps with the detox process. And if you add a tiny pinch of sea salt, it'll add those trace minerals we all hear about that we need that not everyone gets enough of. For a detox, it's really great to eat in season. So um, visit your local farmer's market, eat whole fresh foods when they're fresh and abundant. Go for a variety of types of produce. Again, it goes back to the rainbow diet, eat a variety. Each color is a different nutrient, so you need all of them to get all the nutrients. Also for a detox, it's a good idea not to let yourself get really hungry. So eat every three or four hours. Never wait until you're starving to eat because that just unbalances your blood sugar. Um, another way to keep your blood sugar balanced is by eating a lot of protein-based meals more frequently. Uh, great sources of that would be like baked or broiled fish, lean poultry, black beans, chickpeas. There's a lot of stuff people take out for things like a detox. And I think it's all about just balancing the things you have in, you know. Uh, it's also really important to make sure that you're getting enough essential fatty acids and oils. So things like fish oil, borage oil, flaxseed oil, they're all fabulous at putting out the fires that inflammation sends through our body. Things like omega-3 fatty acids, they are known as essential fatty acids because you need them, but your body can't make them. So you have to consume them as part of a healthy diet. I take a really solid high dose omega-3 supplement and I swear by it, it so many benefits. Also detox is more than just food, it's digital too. So actually turn off your cell phone, your TV, computer, get away from Facebook for a while. Um, I've started handwriting notes to like my grandmother and my friends. I'm reading some great books, reconnecting with nature, especially now that gardening season is upon us. I'm so excited to start growing my own fruits and vegetables again. Big part about detox is like the downtime. You need to give your body a chance to rest and recover and heal. So sleep deep, chill out. The goal is to activate that rest and digest mode in your parasy parasympathetic nervous system because that's what helps restore your energy. It actually eliminates cortisol production. Cortisol is a stress hormone, helps your body heal and replenish itself. So things that help that meditation, deep breathing, calming activities like yoga or Tai Chi is things are super duper helpful. Um, try to get eight hours of sleep a night. And this may sound obvious if you're doing a detox, but avoid smoking. Recreational drugs and alcohol fit into this category as well. These just completely defeat the purpose of doing a detox. So for detox, I have a very long list of things that I would say to just get out because I said the first phase is about getting the junk out. So the very long list, get ready, 
<laughs> alcohol, mm -hmm. of course, caffeine, which most people hate, chocolate, which everybody hates to give up, dairy products is huge for doing a detox. You just remove them for a few days. Gluten contra containing grains like wheat, rye, oats, or barley, just because these don't agree with a lot of people's digestive systems. So it's good to get those out. Corn and all products containing corn, meat, fish, poultry, and eggs, grains, uh, small amounts of rice or quinoa, even amaranth can be used just to give you some fiber during your diet. Minimize the sugar, the honey, the molasses, any and all artificial sweeteners. Fruit juices typically have a lot of sugar in them, so they're not the best. Even though it's natural sugar, it still will, it's that glycemic index again. It'll spike your blood sugar. You'll get food cravings. You'll get hungry faster. Uh, nuts are another one. Cold drinks, so like um, juice out of the fridge is something you think would be good for you, but the fact that it's cold actually doesn't agree with giving your digestive system a chance to rest. And also oils. So except for small amounts of olive or coconut, maybe flax oil, and for that, that's even just to cook the vegetables or eat with the vegetables and that's two tablespoons a day max. So instead of eating all those things, <laughs> there is still an even longer list of things that is good to eat and is actually really beneficial, especially things like green leafy vegetables, uh, particularly bitter greens. I love bitter greens. Bitter is one of the flavor sensations that is most ideal for our digestive system because it stimulates re release of all those digestive juices. So things like dandelion greens, endive, parsley, beets, and beet greens are fabulous for this. Kale, chard, mustard greens, spinach, bok choy, arugula, even mixed salad greens. These are all really, really great options when you're doing a detox because they give your body those nutrients that it needs while kind of helping you get all that junk out because there's so much fiber in greens. So you pair that with a bunch of cruciferous vegetables because those are great for metabolic detoxification and liver support, which is what you want during this time. As an added bonus, the green cru crucifers also contain chlorophyll, which boosts your detox capacity even more. So these would be things like kale, broccoli, and broccoli sprouts. I love broccoli sprouts. Cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, mustard greens, uh, foods from the onion family, because they have a higher sulfur content, which helps with the detox process. So onions, shallots, garlic, leeks. These are great to include during a detox. Also including artichokes and Jerusalem artichokes once or twice a week. That's a really great option. That's Lots of flavor in those. Tons of brightly colored vegetables, especially uh, the alkaline ones. Basically, if it's alkaline, you want it. So beets and beetroot, celery, asparagus, zucchini, cucumbers, string beans, um, naturally fermented sauerkraut, which is my favorite. Sea vegetables are awesome. And then there's a couple herbs that are actually really good for detox as well that I tell everyone to include. So turmeric, which everyone should be taking anyways, just for its anti-inflammatory properties, really good. And this herb has an affinity for the liver, which makes it a great choice for detox and cleanse programs. It also may help to soften your stools, which is a great way to aid in your toxin excretion. No, no conversation with nutritionists would be complete without the subject of poop coming up. <laughs> That's half my job, seriously. Other herbs, milk thistle. Milk thistle is a really great one because it helps protect healthy cells in the liver from free radical damage or inflammation caused by toxins. It can also stimulate the regeneration of new healthy cells and helps your body to kind of just balance out. It, there's no adverse side effects that have been documented, which is why I really like this one. Although it may loosen your stools slightly because it increases bile flow, but this is not a bad thing again, because that just gets more of those toxins out. Dandelion, I love just because it's so beneficial for both the kidneys and the liver. It has diuretic properties, which helps to flush out toxins, um, but also has potassium sparing effects because a lot of problem is when you're doing it like a flush or something, sometimes you'll flush out a lot of your potassium and you need that. So this helps you actually protect your potassium levels and also helps protect against kidney stones. The other one is burdock root because burdock is high in, okay, get ready for this name, fructo oligosaccharides. Basically it's a fruit multi, multi sugar. It helps eliminate bacterial pathogens, which can help build up in the gut. It also increases saliva and bile secretions, which helps break down and excrete toxins from the body. A great way to get these herbs in is you can do them as a tea. I do herbal teas a lot. And I, if I'm doing it as a tea, I'll also add things like ginger root, astragalus, licorice root, uh, mint for flavor. They all have their own range of health benefits as well. Uh, Roibus is a great one. Cardamom is a wonderful one. And also things like bone broth is really good for doing a detox because that gives you a bunch of minerals. So you can make a, you can make a bone broth just by 
putting like from Thanksgiving and Easter, for example, we, we roast a turkey, take those bones, throw it in a soup pot, cover it with water. And then you add vegetables like uh, green beans, zucchini, parsley, spinach, celery, simmer that. And then you can drain it, eat the vegetables because I still eat the vegetables, but then put the broth in a jar in the fridge and just sip it uh, for the next three or four days. And you get a ton of health benefits just from doing that alone. So you'd basically eat like this for two or three days because this is how you get all that junk out. At the same time, you're making sure you're drinking tons of lemon water, consuming lots and lots of fiber. Then you start adding the other nutrients back in. So things like B vitamins, broad spectrum B vitamins is essential for everything in your body from helping, your, helping you convert sugar into energy to helping your body produce blood cells. So taking a good solid multi B vitamin is a great way to just make sure you're getting all those nutrients in that you need, especially for your detox. Great sources of B vitamins you can get through food, meat, especially liver, seafood, poultry, eggs, dairy products, uh, legumes, leafy greens, that kind of stuff. They're everywhere. Really easy to get. We need more of them. But especially if you're detoxing, in that second stage of the detox, it's just a really good thing to make sure you get enough of. So yeah, vitamin C, sunshine vitamin, helps fight fatigue and depression. Uh, these are not things you want to be dealing with and you're detoxing. So it, because then what you're going to go through is going to feel like a withdrawal. And that's not fun. So taking vitamin C helps to kind of balance that out. Food sources for this include citrus fruits, as we all know about, but also sweet peppers, strawberries, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and potatoes have vitamin C, notable amounts of vitamin C. Uh, calcium is really important. The calcium supplements um, work best if you're also getting plenty of vitamin D to make sure to get some sunshine. Food sources for calcium, everyone knows milk and cheese or other dairy foods. Also green leafy vegetables and fish where you eat the bones like sardines. That's really good. Magnesium, which everybody needs more of, but especially in the case of detox, because like I said about the bowel movements, you got to get those toxins out and magnesium really, really helps with that. Um, helps relax the muscles in your digestive tract while also helping to the stool to slide through the intestines. So you won't get backed up, toxins will be removed, you will feel better. Um, food sources of magnesium, green leafy vegetables like spinach, also legumes, nuts, seeds, whole grains. Protein is important during a detox, um, especially during the second phase, because those amino acids that you get, they're the building blocks of protein. They're used to help rebuild damaged cells and rebuild neurotransmitters in the brain to create healthier connections. So by clearing out the old quote unquote dirty proteins and replacing them with cleaner new proteins after you have detoxed for a few days, you, it's amazing how much better you'll feel and function. Food sources of protein, um, lean meats, poultry, fish and seafood, eggs, dairy products like milk, yogurt, cheese. All this stuff can be found through a Google search. And I, I actually, for, for food sources of different nutrients, Google's actually a pretty good option. Um, it's a good idea to take a really solid multivitamin during a detox, just to make sure that your body's getting all those nutrients that you need. And one thing I'd actually say is really important is avoid commercial detox products because your body is quite capable of cleansing and renewing itself given the right nutrients you just don't need these fancy products to help accomplish that goal and then you're paying a lot of dollars for something that's might or might not work so i have like a shopping list for a five-day detox and it basically is a list of all the fruits supplements vegetables that you would need to get through this successfully and it's actually really simple so things like mangoes green apples pineapple bananas blueberries raspberries lemons and limes that's it for the fruits everyone can handle that veggies that are important spinach kale avocado cucumbers lots and lots of celery celery is great it has they call it negative calories because it, it your body will burn more calories digesting the celery than it will actually get from eating the celery so it's a really good diet food, really good detox food. It's also got a really high hydration level, lots and lots of water. So that's really great for you. Um, supplements that would be important during a, a detox would be like a, a good probiotic because that's just going to help your body to process all that food that you are eating in a better, more effective way. Like I said, a multivitamin is important and an omega-3 supplement, which everyone should be taking anyways. And those other ingredients that I was talking about, coconut water, cayenne pepper, Things like almond milk and almond butter, ground flax seed, green tea, coconut oil, and surprisingly Epsom salt, because Epsom salt is a great source of magnesium, but it's also good for detox and then gives you an excuse to have a bath. I know there's a ton of information, so I do apologize, but.
you know, you talked a lot about probiotics, vitamins, and supplements. I guess what's some of the importance with probiotics, just, just to give context for everyone? And also, what are some of the vitamins and supplements that you recommend? Because I know it's, it's difficult for us to get everything that we need from the food that we eat. Definitely. Probiotics are basically the, our live gut bacteria. So a lot of people don't know, but we are actually more bacteria than we are human. And a lot of that is in our gut, especially in the intestines. So our diets in like the standard American diet, it's sad, called sad for a reason. <laughs> um, it's very, very highly acidic. It's got a lot of processed foods. It's got a lot of sugar. It's got a lot of fats, like unhealthy fats, like trans fats. So none of that is good for that gut bacteria. And if we don't want it to all die off and then we'll have huge digestive problems, um, dysbiosis, you could get like a lot of worse things even. You just need to replenish that good gut bacteria. So things like sauerkraut, which is a fermented food, things like kimchi. These are really great ways to kind of replenish that good gut bacteria. It just helps your digestion to run better. And vitamins and supplements, there's a lot of really great brands out there. And I don't like to drop brand names because I don't like to play favorites. Um, but what I tell people is if you're choosing a supplement, if you are going, say you're going and looking for a multivitamin and there's like tons of multivitamins, multivitamins out there, but don't choose it based strictly on the price tag. Don't get the cheapest one because you say, I'm just trying to save money. This is an extra for my health. It's not necessary. Well, um, it is necessary and it will help you if you get a better quality one, like obviously. So um, multivitamins, you want them to have all the vitamins you need. I like the ones that also have phytonutrients in them. So like resveratrol, which you get from red wine. And um, curcumin, which you get from turmeric and orange foods, those, you can get those in a lot of the more natural based supplements. So um, I know that, can, I don't like to name, name drop, but Canprev is kind of probably my favorite for their, as far as their, what they offer in nutrients goes, because they just cover everything that your body needs in quantities that aren't the minimum amount, like there is vitamins you can get and they will give you the absolute minimum amount of the vitamin, but that's because they don't want to give it to give too much to someone. But there's a big difference between what is minimum amount, what is too much and what is not enough. Like there's just such, it's so variable, right? So you just got, you got to listen and know your own body. That's what it comes down to. Nice. So you told us all about the spring detox, which is some great information there. I, myself, I always like to know the full benefit before I start something. So can you wrap it up with, I, I know you did share some of the benefits, but just uh, in conclusion, the benefits of doing the spring detox to get me on the ball. Honestly, the benefits is just think of it like your car windshield. Everybody's car windshield gets dirty as you go through the days and the weeks. And how difficult does it eventually get? to use that car windshield. Very so <laughs> if you keep it clean, keep your diet clean, keep your body clean, you'd be amazed at how much easier it is to use your body, how much easier it is to move, how much easier it is to get things done. And that's what I tell people when it comes to a detox, I know it's gonna be a lifestyle change, but it's only a few days. It will be extremely beneficial for most people. And just like I said, don't overdo it. There's a lot of us professionals out there that know how to do this. We've been trained in how to do this. So come ask us questions. We all have answers. Perfect. Awesome stuff. Now, I actually had one more thing I wanted to ask about. I know there's a lot of talk about salt. Uh, you know, a, a lot of us have way too much salt in our diets, but you also mentioned sea salt earlier. So it's what are kind of some of the benefits of sea salt and, you know, and just as far as salt consumption and the type of salt we should be using, what are your recommendations? For sure. So the trouble with um, with salt is commercial salt is typically that white iodized table salt. So what that actually means is they take, they strip it, they take all the minerals out of the salt, like all these trace minerals that are so good for you. And then they put the iodine back in because people were iodine deficient back in the day. So they started putting that into the salt to get people to have enough. And then they just kept it. And iodized table salt isn't the best because like I said, it's missing all those other minerals. So if you get something like my, everyone's in this Himalayan pink salt, which is a good one. It's pretty good. It's got a lot of those trace minerals, 
a, getting a really good quality Celtic sea salt, that seems to be what jives the best for me. Plus the flavor, it's just, it's, it's, there's no comparison between white table salt and a really good Celtic sea salt. Mm -hmm. And if, if you want to flavor your fruit, your food, you'll need like literally a pinch of that. And it's just a beautiful thing. Good to know. We do the uh, Himalayan. Now, in terms of, you know, just all the things that you're working on, is there anything that we should be uh, looking forward to from you in the, in the months to come? I have been actually trying to put together a program for stroke and brain injury survivors. So I've been trying to put together this program. It's probably going to be about six weeks long. Uh, it's all going to be done virtually because uh, COVID and just easier for people and I'll have more reach this way. It's going to be all about balancing the body out, using things like the rainbow diet and using things like the whole foods and whole breaths and the right type of fitness to kind of regain things you lose due to a stroke or brain injury. So like memory functions, energy, physical functions even. So I like I have, I, I'm taking a long time to put this together because I really want it to be amazing and I want it to help the most people, but that's a tall order. So it's taking a while. No, oh, it's good to look forward to you, that's for sure. Thank you very much, Veronica. It's uh, some great information there and I appreciate you making the time today. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for listening to the Disrupt the Everyday podcast. For more ways to listen, connect with us on social media. To be a guest or to partner with us, check out our link tree at Disrupt the Everyday. Join us next time for more ways to disrupt the everyday.